so today I'm going to record the video for my May 2016 Art Snacks. And I'm going to start off by inking, inking uh, this butterfly here with this crank acrylic pen. Um, it's not really a pen. It's like an interesting ballpoint marker sort of thing. It reminds me of the WD-40 grease pens my dad had when I was a little girl and inside is a heavy body acrylic that is intended for graffiti art um you know so you can just like draw it and go very immediate um however people are also using it for outlines and for lettering too interesting effect I'm sure they're much more proficient at it than I am. So I have this monarch butterfly that I penciled earlier and I'm going to outline it. And one of the neat things about this acrylic is if you spray it while it's still wet, it will disperse out. So I'm hoping I can get some interesting effects. And I'm also uh, wondering about where I'm gonna put my hand. Because this thing puts out a lot of a lot of ink, a lot of uh, goo. And you can even build up layers and textures in this. And you can probably honestly blend it out very easily with a paintbrush um, for a sort of more subtle effect. But tonight, I'm just going to... I think I'm just going to go you know, unabashedly in. So maybe I will grab a water brush and I have a spray bottle handy because I want to capitalize on that sort of uh, mist, spray mist effect. You can see this is not meant for delicate nuance work at all. Um, if you're doing a large mural, this might be handy for you though. And this is a new product from Crank. On a size this small, I am having a little difficulty controlling it. So if you guys got one of these and you're interested in putting it to good use, I recommend you guys go big or go home. So let's give that a spritz to encourage it to sort of bleed out. I'll start in on this wing. I might have to work on this in a couple of batches. And my intention isn't so much to create a piece of fine art. I really just want to make something out of my normal comfort zone of like heavily rendered, heavily mannered. Okay, so that one's done. Let's give that a spritz. I guess I'm gonna spritz it a little lighter than the other side did. And once this is dry, I'm gonna go over it with the FW acrylic that came in my box for this month. So I'm gonna need to step away soon because I don't necessarily wanna ink over wet areas, although I guess well, that'll work in its own way maybe because it seems to go over wet fairly easily, which um, I'm not super duper familiar with the, with the, with just acrylic markers in general. I have some and I've used some on this channel, but I'm not as familiar with them as I am with alcohol markers. If any of you are familiar with like Liquitex or Montana's or Crink's um, other acrylics, would you guys let me know if those will write wet on wet or if that's a problem and that's why they introduced the rollerball thing? The rollerball itself is pretty novel for this sort of an application. Okay, so one more wing to go. It's sort of got that hot mess look going on. So we're going to just embrace the chaos. And 
This is a plain mist bottle. Honestly, this came from like a mushroom growing kit I bought. But you can get these sort of mister bottles at Walmart, at Dollar Tree, at um, like beauty supply companies. I get them in bulk off of Amazon. They're not anything special. So we're going to let this dry. In, or we could dab some of that acrylic up with a paper towel. Just try to be gentle about it because I don't want. I just want when I put orange down later, I want it to show up to, at least somewhat in those areas. This could also be cool for like a faux stained glass look on maybe acrylic. Might be something worth dabbling in if you have some acrylic or plastic lying around the house. I need to move my phone because somebody's texting me and it's buzzing. And I think the sort of um, the modeled look I'm getting looks really cool. It's definitely very grungy, much grungier than I normally do. Um, so it's kind of fun to do that. Um, and I am using fluid watercolor paper because I like doing mixed media techniques. And I found that fluid watercolor paper tends to hold up. To those sort of that sort of abuse pretty well and when this is dry it's going to be waterproof because it is an acrylic ink but because it applies so thickly you do have a larger window than you might with other acrylic pens all right time to let that dry okay so it's not entirely dry but i think we are good to move on i hope we're good to move on to the uh thorax of this butterfly which i was going to um probably color in so um it's not a this this isn't a complaint it's just a, a statement if you're working on a damp or wet surface especially paper you may have a harder time getting the ball to roll. It's not impossible. It's not so difficult that, you know, you're going to be frustrated, but you will face a little resistance and it's not going to leave as um, thick a line as it does, as thick a deposit of paint really is what it is, as it would on the, um, on dry paper. So let's try painting in that thorax using water and a Derwent water brush. And if you want to make any of your lines look a little more painterly um, and less rollerball-ish, you know, if you're, if you're working on paper, if you're working kind of small, you can go over your lines, maybe not the ones over here that are dry, and just sort of smooth them out a little bit. And you could probably do this... Uh, if you do do graffiti art and you are interested in um, a more watercolory or a more painterly look, you could probably do this with like a large, um, maybe like a hog bristle brush or like a good synthetic, a good large synthetic. And I know Liquitex makes like mural brushes now and mural tools. So um, if you're a mural artist or a graffiti artist, that might be something you want to check out. Seems like they would play well together. I'm just smoothing out some of these lines, just sort of playing around with it. Because that's one of the reasons why I enjoy doing these reviews. Is because it gives me a chance to just like take a minute and play with materials I wouldn't otherwise get a chance to play with. So I definitely, because this is acrylic and it will ruin it if you leave it in the brush, you do want to clean it. I'm going to spray some water. Not dispersing up there as much as I would have liked. Now it's going a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to let this dry. Um, 
before I add the orange, I'm going to let this dry 24 hours, but I actually think I want to do kind of like maybe an ink wash thing with the wings. So I'm going to let this dry for a little while and I'll get back to it. Okay, so the paper is damp, but not entirely dried out. Um, however, it's also not so wet that it's unworkable. So I'm going to resume working with my crink acrylic. I've got a lot of areas of black that I would like to turn into ink wash. So I'm going to put some ink or rather acrylic down, pull out my water brush again and start moving that ink while it's still wet. And once I finish with this, I'm actually going to allow this to dry overnight. And that way we should get a pretty decent result tomorrow when we go back with the FW acrylic ink. And I don't want to cover all the areas either because I really like this nice modeled effect that I'm getting. I just want to encourage the acrylic to fill other areas. And we'll give it one pump because it seems to be running a little low. You definitely don't want to over pump because it will go everywhere. And that ended up not working out quite the way I wanted. So I'm going to soak a lot of it up, clean off my brush really well, and rework the area to blend that out a little bit better. And keep in mind that I am definitely not using this pen the way it is intended to be used. So if you want to see this thing really work, Hopefully, some graffiti artists will review their Sketchbox goodies. I mean, dang it to heck. Art Snacks. Art Snacks goodies. Not even thinking. I'm so sorry. All right. So, now... We have an ink wash. Let's see if I can't get that to flood a little bit. Okay, so this needs to dry overnight. Now we might be finished with this so what you need to do is you need to clean the tip and then store it tip side up so it doesn't get like clogged and ruined see that's what the tip looks like it's actually a lot smaller than you would think let me see if i can get to focus see that little ball that's the tip. That's what you want to prevent from getting clogged. So recap it and store it tip side up. And I'll see you guys tomorrow when hopefully we'll be able to finish this butterfly. All right, guys, it's a brand new day and it seems like the acrylic on my butterfly has dried. So we're going to move on over to some basic fills and washes using this, uh, Kuratake Brush 2.0, which came in my art snacks, and it's filled with the PHW acrylic ink. And I'm just doing some kind of loose, sloppy fills. I'm not super concerned with it um, being too neat. This is just sort of a fun mixed media piece. Now, when you add water to acrylic, especially FW acrylic, and those of you who have seen my Sketchbox challenge video, because I used the orange FW, FW acrylic ink on that salamander, notice that I had some really long dry times. 
And that's something I am concerned with today. Want to spray some of that orange out into the background. I'm just using a spray bottle with plain water. It's nothing fancy. As mentioned in earlier videos. So basically, that's why I'm overfilling some areas is so that when I spray the water, it'll the force will send my ink water mixture further out into the illustration. And it gives it a neat splatter effect. And you can get a similar but not the same effect if you take a straw and you use it to blow um, a wet can, like a wet piece of shoot. So if I were to take a straw and blow uh, my ink while the paper's wet and the ink's wet, I'd get a very similar effect that might even be a little more guided than what I'm doing here. Ugh, it's hard when it's upside down because what you really want is the force of the water being sprayed, not the water itself. So you don't actually want to oversaturate it because that's going to ruin what you're going for. If, if you're going for a technique that's similar to this. Now, I want to drop some unconcentrated ink into there since we're losing a lot of our color. And this is gonna go everywhere, that's okay. Then, since this is already starting to bleed, I'm gonna spray it out. So you get this neat splatter effect too. And later on in this piece, if we decide we wanna encourage that splatter effect, I'll show you guys something with a synthetic brush. Okay, so this needs to dry because it's already in the messy zone. So I was thinking and I found or I, I my eyes fell upon this screen I purchased just the other day from Cheap Joe's because I was in the Charlotte area. Um, and this is meant that you can drop ink or watercolor and it'll do a splatter effect. And I didn't get a chance to try it out yet. So, you know, you know how I am with these things. I enjoy possibly screwing something up so I can test out a new toy. Anyway, I thought it seemed cool and I, cause like the whole point is you can paint multiple colors. So I may be going over this again, but while the paper is still relatively wet, I'm going to give this thing a try. So the thing is you paint it on and this is acrylic ink. So I need to clean this out really good. Paint it on and then you like tap it and it should come out. And if you don't have a cheap Joe's around, oh, see, it's already dripping. So I got to work. I got to work quick and I may have. Yeah, I think I did. I think I goofed. The big area is not dripping appropriately. See, that's the sort of splatter I was thinking we were going to get. I don't know why we're getting the big area. It's happened pretty hard, too. This side is working really well, whereas the big splotch I did isn't working at all. Let's, let's spritz this out because I don't want giant droplets of fluorescent orange all over the place. So this thing doesn't work as well as I thought it would. Maybe I'm doing this just, maybe I did it on the wrong side, I don't know. Figure it out. Anyway, got to clean this thing up now. Let's try it one more time. That seems to be working a slight bit better. 
So I think I had it upside down. This top corner is going to be a mess. Now we need to let this dry forever. So I gotta go clean this off. I'll be back. So I have a lot of excess liquid on my paper. Um, I could let it dry, but I'm going to try to soak some of it up so we don't have like six hour dry times. And I'm gonna do that very carefully by putting a paper towel in the top of the pool of water. My intention isn't to soak up the entire pool, just the majority of it. So we don't have so many areas of standing water. And you see, it's a pretty simple but effective way to um, sort of eliminate excess water from your page. You can also do it. Um, it's a lot slower to do it this way, but you can do it with a natural hair brush and just stick it in the pool, soak up the water, and then dry the brush out and repeat. But this way also works really well, and it's very simple to do. So I'm going to soak up, like I said, some of the standing water. I will check back in with you guys. Hey guys, so while this is still slightly wet, I'm gonna show you another splatter technique. And this is one I've used on the channel in the past. And what you want to start with is a synthetic watercolor brush. And this is a really simple kind of cheap technique. And you're just, going to gently tap and I want it to go in some of those wet areas because it means the paint is going to disperse a bit so just like some of the areas of the orange aren't very sharp because they dispersed I want the same thing for this pearlescent white that I'm using And I'll be revisiting this pearlescent ink later. All right, so everything is pretty much dry. And I just want to go ahead and fill in a layer of the darker fluorescent orange on the wings of the monarch. So I am using a synthetic brush to sort of put a glaze over that area. And later on, when this piece is finished, I may decide to go, or feels more finished, I may decide to go back with the Crank K90 that came in my box and sort of tighten everything up. Because the acrylic, when you build up enough of the FW acrylic ink, even something as uh, transparent as this highlighter orange will um, sort of make it look dirty and less clean because it's covering up the black. And I'm going to build some areas of glaze up more than others. All right, this is gonna take a few minutes to dry, so I will check back in on it later. So we're going to apply another layer, hopefully build up transparent layers of this to help build up um, like intensity of color because it is a fluorescent orange and it does look very fluorescent already. But if I can get some areas a little darker, that would be good. And like I said, I'm going to go over this again with the Crink K90. 
just to clean up some of those areas. Let, you, let that dry, and then I'll see you guys back with the K90. Okay, guys, so my FW acrylic ink has dried, and now it's time for the... Wow, I can't get my camera stand to stop shaking. Now it's time to reapply some of this crink acrylic, and I cleaned it off last night, so I need to get it going again. One pump. And first, I'm going to start out with filling in the... Um, the Monarch's body again. Now this is a really heavy bodied acrylic. I'm gonna zoom in so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Of all of the acrylic markers on the market, Liquitex, Montana, Crank, this one has the heaviest bodied um, paint that I've yet encountered. And I've been told that Crank wants it like this, that they've done some special processes to ensure that this is a very heavy bodied acrylic. And I've mentioned earlier that it's really meant to be used um, for bigger pieces than this by graffiti artists, by letterers. Um, it's not really intended to give clean outlines, so I'm not expecting it to do so. I'm mostly just trying to clean it up a little bit while embracing the chaos. And I am using a Derwent water brush, which isn't really the best water brush on the market. In fact, I'm having trouble with it right now. Um, just to sort of spread my paint around, uh, do another layer basically of faux ink wash, get some coverage cover up some of the orange to really make the butterfly pop a little bit better because that glazing of orange is going to kind of detract away from the graphicness and the contrast. So I'm going to focus on um, cleaning up some of those lines, darkening some things. I'm going to do it in time lapse. And I'm mostly just going to rely on the brush and pulling it from an area of high saturation to bring it to an area that I want to be less saturated. So I've cleaned up most of my black line work on this and I need to let it fully dry before I can go back to adding details. There are definitely some white spots I need to add and I may even decide to go over some of those with orange because on a Monarch there, um, there is variation in tone on them that I missed with this. Um, so far, it is pretty graphic, and um, it looks a lot like stained glass, due mostly to the line width that the crank gives out. And um, before I move on, I need to clean off the tip of my crank marker so I can put it away. All right, so I need to let this fully dry, and then I'll be back. All right, so my crank acrylic is mostly dry, and I want to use a combination of two different FW products. I want to use FW White first, and then I want to go over it in parts with FW um, Iridescent Acrylic. And you guys can see, well, it's hard to catch the iridescence, but I've already used some of the iridescent on a splatter effect. And since this is a drawing ink, it does tend to be kind of thin. Okay. 
So we may have to darken it up or even build up some of these areas for them to be the right amount of saturation. And some of these I'm actually going to end up coating over with orange, like glazing them with orange in order to get the color I really want. One of the nice things about these acrylic inks is they dry really quickly. They don't have as long a dry time as um, the body, the tube uh, ones do. One of the problems with that though is it means they're not open for as long. So your ability to make changes uh, is very limited. Okay, so I'm going to switch tracks a little bit and then go back to that simple splatter technique I was showing you guys earlier. This is on mostly dry paper. So instead of feathering out into the water, the individual splatters are going to stay very distinct. All right, that needs to dry. All right, so I think our white is... Mo oh, oh, I was wrong. Gotta wait. Okay, so now it's dry. And I want to go over just a few of those spots with the orange because they weren't really intended to be white highlights. They were intended to be a softer shade of orange than I have access to at this time. So just going to carefully go over. And it's fine if they're not perfect because we're not going for perfection. We're just having a good time and playing with the materials and becoming familiar with them. So this is almost done, or rather, I'm almost done with this. There are a couple of things I wanted to do. I wanted to do some areas on the wing that have sort of an iridescent effect to it. And the white FW Pearl acrylic is good, I'm gonna use this bottle cap just to mix some water in with my, ooh, it's like orange water, that's perfect. So gently brush some of this iridescence, trying to be careful not to go over the areas of black that we just corrected. You can always correct them again, but don't necessarily want to spend the rest of my life painting a single butterfly either. Now, the more layers of acrylic you put on a, on the paper, the, um, the more it's going to form a seal. So. It may take a little bit longer to dry because your water isn't going to soak into the paper. It's going to have to evaporate. So just keep that in mind if you used um, acrylic in a mixed media application. And if you guys watch my demonstration video for this box, or maybe it was Art Snacks, one of them, I show that acrylic inks will be reactivated if you use alcohol marker on them. So if you want to use a mixed media application with watercolor, I mean with alcohol inks like Copic, uh, Prismacolor, or Ranger, uh, if you want to use a mixed media application for that, you need to do your alcohol inks first. Otherwise, they can become reactivated. So I'm going to give this a chance to dry. Some of it is dry enough that I can do what I want the next part of this, and some of them are a little wet. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry because I am just doing another layer of the iridescence splatter.
And the closer you hold your brush to the paper, the tighter the spray is going to be, the further up you pull your brush, the farther out, the more spread it's going to be. All right. So other than this thing drying, I think we are done with this month's Art Snacks Challenge. So the materials used in this month's challenge that came in the box, let's put those on one side and the materials we added on another. So we received a bottle of FW for last fluorescent orange ink in this month's box other artists other subscribers received different fluorescent colors but i believe everyone got a fluorescent um we also received kuratake's brush 2o which is 20 percent bigger than their older brush and i filled mine with a mixture of the fluorescent ink and water we also received a crink k90 and finally and i think I think I was bad and I think I didn't use it at all. I should have. I had an opportunity to use it. Um, we also received a general Cedar Point pencil. And I will go ahead and leave that on my desk because I'm sure some of you guys are curious about it. Um, the Korean K90 is an acrylic marker. It has a thicker acrylic body than um, many other acrylic markers. And it's unique because it has a pump on the back and it's got a ballpoint tip. It puts down a pretty thick line. So over here are the goodies that came in the box. We also used water in a pump bottle, FW liquid um, pearlescent ink in white, um, FW white ink, just plain white ink, a Derwent water brush, and a couple of other brushes. So didn't really have to do too, too much augmentation. Um, if your studio is missing some of these, you can feel free to, to, you know, replace, substitute with what you have handy. None of the materials I brought to the table this challenge were particularly expensive or hard to find. Um, and I thought it was really neat to get to play with this Crink K90. I look forward to seeing what people whose style is more graffiti and graphic, people who work larger, maybe mural artists. I look forward to seeing how they use this marker because I know I'm not the intended audience, but it was fun to play with it anyway. So I'm Becca Hilburn from Natto Soup Studio. Um, I hope you guys found this video um, informative educational inspiring if you did please remember to hit like that lets me know you enjoyed the video um please consider subscribing to my channel i do these comparative unboxings every month um uh, please consider sharing this video to your social networks uh, other people can benefit from it too um they may enjoy my content and that helps me build a larger audience if you want more about this particular review please check out my blog natosoup.blogspot.com where i'm going to have everything written up so you guys can easily see it including pictures and links to these videos so if you missed a video you should definitely check out the blog post um and finally if you are interested oh before i sign off i need to thank my fantastic patrons on patreon thank you guys so much you make this sort of stuff possible you unlock these videos so that everyone can enjoy them through your generosity and i appreciate that and i'm sure many other people who are interested in these boxes appreciate your generosity if you would like to help support more content like this you can find out how on my patreon patreon.com slash soup there's all the information there and if you have a particular question please leave me a comment i will try to answer it sometimes I get a little bit overwhelmed. I have a friend helping me with my comments now. So hopefully I can get to all of you guys. All right. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I know my butterfly's wings are a little bit wonky. <laughs> Just thought I would acknowledge that before I sign off. I'll see you guys later on with even more art content. Bye.